Hello, Miles Maeda here with more Modern Yoga Movement videos for you. This is the final piece of the spiral line sequence, and we are going to focus on twisting and rotational movements and postures lying on the back. So let's start by getting onto the back. So with your feet flat on the floor, bend the knees and just hold behind the knees. Sit right on top of the sits bones, spine lifted, inhaling here. Keep feeling that lift as you exhale and start to roll down one vertebra at a time. Let your feet slide on the floor. You can pull with your hands and push a little bit with your legs to create some stability. And let's hug the knees into the chest. And then place the feet flat on the floor and keep the knees bent for now. This can be uh, done with a strap if your hamstrings are a little tight. So let's start by extending the right leg up and with your first two fingers grabbing the big toe. So securely holding on to the toe. If the knee needs to bend slightly, that's fine. But ideally, you're stretching the leg, reaching through the heel. And if you're comfortable in this position, you can extend that left leg onto the floor. So the right leg is flexed, the left toes are pointed, reaching through both legs. Inhale here. And very slowly, Lower the leg on the exhale to the right. And the thing to pay attention to is the left hip and the left shoulder. So my left hand is pressing down on the hip. You can also press down on the thigh. And I'm also aware of my left shoulder. So if you go too fast or you go too far, you might roll on the floor and your foot will end up on the floor, your right foot. So it's Ideal to keep that left shoulder down and left hip down and just open the right leg as much as possible. It does not have to go to the floor. Still reaching through your legs and nice long spine on the floor. Inhale, bring your leg back to center. And we're gonna switch hands. So taking your two fingers from the left hand, grab that big toe and it'll help to extend that right arm out to the side. And same thing here, we wanna be aware of the right shoulder and right hip. So in this position, feel like you're drawing your thigh bone into the hip socket as you bring your leg just slightly over to the left. So this is preparing us for the twist. So we're bringing, we're drawing the thigh bone into the hip socket, keeping that right shoulder and right hip down, and then very slowly bring the leg further over towards the floor. But again, if you move too fast, you're gonna roll over. And what we want to do is do our best to keep that right shoulder down. The hip will roll up, but we want to do it slowly with control. So take your time, and here we have our spinal twist. Feel the rotation in the vertebrae of the spine. And let the breath flow. So the foot can be off the floor. It can also be on the floor on this side. And then very slowly, let's come back up to center. So it's good to take our time here and then release the foot, bend the knees, feet flat on the floor. You can bring your arms back to your sides. And let's repeat this on the other side. Extend the left leg up, and with your left hand, you grab that big toe with your first two fingers. Same thing here, we're pulling the thigh bone, the femur head into the hip socket. And at the same time, we're reaching out through the heel, so there's a little bit of opposition going on in that left leg. And if it helps, you can use a strap. If you can't reach your foot, you can also slightly bend the knee. If you feel comfortable in this position, you can extend that right leg on the floor, point the toes. 
So we're reaching through the toes on that right leg. And my right hand is pressing the hip down. You can also press the thigh down. And I'm aware that my shoulder will stay down as well. So inhale, reach through that left heel, reach through the right toes. And on the exhale, very slowly lower the leg to the left. So pulling with the arm, pushing through the heel, reaching through the heel. That will actually help us to control the movement. And then do your best to keep that right hip down, right shoulder down. If it starts to roll up, then pause. You don't want to go any further with that left leg. Keep the hip and shoulder down. And then little by little, the muscle tissue and the fascia will start to pull and stretch and lengthen. And your foot over time will be able to get closer to the floor. Now slowly, let's come back to center. Inhale. And then we'll switch hands. So taking the first two fingers of the right hand, and then the left hand will come out to the side, palm down. Let's, again, think of drawing the femur head into the hip socket and reaching away from the heel. So extending the knee, inhale here. And on the exhale, we're moving the leg across the midline just a little bit to start. So we're feeling the stretch in the abductors and still feeling that we're drawing the thigh bone into the hip. And then we slowly lower the leg further, adding the spinal twist. So keep that left shoulder down. The pelvis will start to roll, but we want to do it very slowly and controlled, feeling the rotation of the vertebrae in the spine. And maybe the foot will end up on the floor. It doesn't have to. But let's reach through the toes on the right foot, reach through the heel on the left. And then very slowly, let's come back to center. And then release the foot. And we'll bend the knees, feet flat on the floor once again. Okay, we'll finish in shoulder stand. And if you can't do a full shoulder stand, you can always do a half candle. So in previous videos, I've done some uh, exercises to get ready for shoulder stand. So in this one, we're just going to go right into our shoulder stand. Uh, but we're going to do it with bent legs. You can do it with straight legs as well. So inhale. And on the exhale, we raise the legs up, use the hands and arms to press the legs over the body into an easy plow position. This feels nice. You can hang out here and stretch. Eventually, put your hands on your back so that we can come into our shoulder stance. So you're walking your elbows close to each other, your shoulders towards each other. And then the half candle is the body at an angle and the full shoulder stand is more or less vertical. So adjust yourself so that you're in a comfortable position. The weight of the body is more in the elbows and the shoulders, less in the head and the neck. Now let's do an exercise coming into Halasana. Inhale, plow pose. Exhale, just lower the legs towards the floor. And on the inhale, we'll raise the legs back up into shoulder stand. Now we're going to spiral the legs to the right, keeping the feet together. So we're spiraling the spine. Exhale, bring the legs down to halasana. So the feet go to the right. You can flex or point. So now there's a spiral in the spine. And see that you still have equal weight on your shoulders. So that left shoulder is the one we want to pay attention to. Inhale, come back up to center. Let's spiral the body to the left. So the leg spiral. And come into plow pose with the feet coming over towards the left. And here, again, we're in a spiral. The weight, we want to be sure, is equal in our shoulders. So pay attention to the right side. Inhale, back up. Karnapidasana. So we want to bend the knees. 
and we'll start in the center. You can just bring your knees towards your forehead and then bring yourself back up into a shoulder stand. Spiral the body to the right and bend the knees and come down towards the floor. You don't have to come all the way down. I don't think I can. <laughs> and let's come back up, inhaling. Shoulder stand. And then we spiral the body to the left, bend the knees and bring your knees towards the floor. So it's on the left side of the face. Again, you don't have to get all the way down to the floor. And then inhale, come back up into center. And bend the knees, bring them towards the forehead. Now we can extend the legs and come into a nice plow pose. Let's extend the arms. You can walk your toes towards your head. Press your heels towards the floor. Inhale here, and on the exhale, let's slowly roll down, one vertebra at a time. Keep your knees close to your face, reaching through your legs, and we'll pause here at 90 degrees. Inhale, and just like we came in with bent knees, you can go out with bent knees. So I point my toes, internally rotate the legs and bend the knees. So that means the feet will actually separate as they go down towards the floor. And then they'll end up being as wide as the mat, maybe a little bit wider. The feet are just forward of the knees. And then let's rest the knees together. Now doing that much shoulder stand, uh, we want to be able to feel a nice counter pose in the chest and the neck. So we can sit on the arms. So just slide the extended arms under your body and it'll feel like you're sitting either on your hands or your arms or your wrists. And then let's extend the legs, point your toes. So this is fish pose. So the hands are palms down on the floor and they're touching each other. Again, my pelvis is on my arms or my wrist or your hand, my hands, just depends on the length of your arms. But my arms are more or less extended at the moment. So point the toes. The first thing we wanna do is focus on the sits bones pressing down on the hands or the arms. So press down. You'll start to feel like you could lift the belly and lift the chest. And you're gonna use your elbows. So press your elbows down as well. Keep reaching through your legs and your head's gonna come off the floor. So inhale, the chest comes up, the head comes up, the sleep feet slide forward just a little bit. And then gently lower the top of the head onto the floor. So my main anchor is my sits bones pressing down on my hands. The second anchor is the crown of the head touching the floor. So just feel like you're pressing down onto the floor more gently with the head and feeling a nice arch in the front of the body, stretching the belly. Keep reaching through the toes. Now use your elbows and your arms for support. Inhale, we're gonna lift up, bring your chin towards your chest. So we're lengthening the back and then let's roll down and then release the arms out from under the body. And then you can rest in a relaxation pose, lying on the back. We want to feel the shoulder blades tucked under the back, shoulders down from the ears, arms extended, palms up. And they're about a foot away from the body, the arms or the hands. Your legs are long, about hip width apart, and you're relaxing the feet out to the sides. Let's inhale, lift the head just a little bit off the floor, bring your chin towards your chest 
and then exhale, relax the head back down. So we want to make sure the back of the neck is long. We don't want to feel it too much, uh, like it's being pulled too much or stretching too much. But we just want the chin to be a little bit lower towards the chest than uh, creating too much of an arch in the back of the neck. And then here, we can just very slowly and gently roll the head to one side. And this is quite slow. So I just made it to the right side, and then I'm going to go back to the center very slowly. And then go to the left. And you're really doing this with as little effort as possible. So try to maintain the feeling of relaxation as you're turning your head, again, very slowly. Come back to center. You can repeat that if you like, or just enjoy the sense of relaxation. Here is where we can integrate all of the information. So the way the energy flows in the body, the way the breath flows, we're letting the cells integrate these new patterns. receiving what it needs to heal and to grow and releasing what it needs or recycling what it no longer needs. If you'd like to stay in a, uh, your deep relaxation longer, you can. For these videos, I often do these relaxations rather short. It's typical to be in a deep relaxation for seven, eight, nine minutes or so. Sometimes if it's a really intense practice, I might do it even longer. So do what feels best for you today. If you're ready to come out, then let's take a deep breath together, inhaling. And a nice long exhale. Let's do that again. Releasing and letting go with the exhale. Wiggle the fingers and toes, circle the wrists and ankles. And then reach the arms overhead, stretching through the fingers, stretching through the toes. And then hug one knee into the chest, hug both knees into the chest. And for a deeper stretch, Hold your elbows, squeeze, softening the tissue at the hips, so the myofascial tissue layers there, and then rock side to side. You can feel a little bit of a spongy quality in the back, softening the fascia there. And then we'll come to center, hold behind the knees, and we'll roll like a ball. So bring the shoulders and the head up towards the knees, and then kick your feet and rock and roll on the back. You roll back onto the shoulders, balance on the sits bones and tail. Let's just do one more. And then just place the feet flat on the floor. 
and come into a comfortable sitting position to finish. And that completes the sequence. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy doing these practice sequences with me, please consider being a Patreon member, which allows you access to live stream classes that we do once a month. And it also helps support the creation of these free videos. Thank you to my Patreon members for their ongoing support. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are uploaded. If you have interest in more of the yoga programs that we do here, you can find that information in the link below. And if you have interest in our retreat center, Liberty Arising, you can also find that information in the link below. Thank you again for practicing with me, and we'll see you in the next video.